Hello again, friends and comrades, and welcome back to the Blind Playthrough of Tyranny with me, Red Zed. And who is this dirty, sweaty, naked person beside me? It's Barrack. Right, we got Barrack out of his armor. Look at that. He even has the same eyes as his sister, or half-sister? Verse? Oh, except they're flipped. That's kind of cool. Reminds me of that Star Trek episode where the dude was black on the one side and white on the other. But the other dude was black on the other side and white on the other side. And they hated each other. They chased each other through the universe. A nice parable about how stupid racism is and all that. Um, I don't know why that wasn't locked. He never had any chance of using bows. But let's get this guy dressed. <laughs> he, needs, uh, he needs some clothing. Let's... Give him. Uh, no, he needs armor. Okay. <clears throat> Let's dress this poor guy. He can have this artifact. It's heavy, and no one else uses heavy armor, so he may as well use it. Uh, let's. I think we have some heavy armor that we kept. Yes, there we go. From the disfavored. So you know he likes the disfavored. I assume he still likes them. I don't know. Maybe he's soured on them since we uh, <laughs> killed Graven Ash. Um, you never know. Ooh, the Iron Walker helm. No, he can wear that. That's fine. Oh, but this one's hygienic, and who needs who needs hygiene more than this guy right now? Oof, he smells. He smells really, really bad. It's gonna take multiple baths, multiple showers, to get him uh, smelling like a, a regular human being again. I don't know what would. What would be the top priority for him? He would be wanting to either, you know, wash himself furiously or run to the nearest uh, brothel and just <laughs> get one out for the first time in a long time. Um, that's pretty sweet. Let's give him that, actually. It's not upgraded, but it has a nice little ability. So if we were to upgrade it, he would be doing pretty well with it. Uh, we did give him the Peacemaker. And he doesn't have a, a one-handed good artifact to use there, so that's fine. Of course, I could give him Dauntless, and uh, maybe we'll do that. <laughs> give him the Dauntless. This will serve me well. It ought to. And uh, you know what? No, I prefer him with an iron weapon. I don't really know why, but boom. I like that setup too. Two artifacts on her. She's such a badass. She's such a badass. Actually, you know what? I have this new one. Is that that's two-handed? Really? That's unfortunate. Um I could give it well, no, I like him having peacemaker, so let's get rid of that. Okay. But yeah, meet the new and slightly cleaner barrack. He still has these, like, giant iron spikes sticking out of his back, which looks extremely painful. <laughs> extremely painful. Um, we're going to go back to Venry's well and change up our party again, because I don't want to keep Eric with me. Um, I'm happy to get him out of his armor and, and, you know, ready to rub one out furiously for himself again. Ready to gently caress himself for the first time in a long time. But... But I don't actually need him to come adventuring with me. He's not that good. I, I really... I think I should have set him up for two-handed weapons instead of uh, tanking. <laughs> Tank, tanking just seems like a waste. Um, so, let's get him out of the party. Let's kick him out. I guess I can talk to you. Fate binder. Good, yep. Yeah. Stock small pack of sages near Den Place. Mm. Come with me, except I don't want you to come with me. Be I want you, Lantry. Be seeing you. I will meet you at Let's the Skyre. Buddy, okay. There's so much of the world I haven't seen. Really? Sure. I think you've been with me to see most of the world, so I think she's lying out her ass. Um, we do have a lot of stuff to collect at these towers. Holy crap! How did that add up so quickly? I mean, it's, it's by, like, in-game days, right? So... 
Let's go to all the other towers. We'll just pick up all that crap. And then we're going to go see Blood and Mark and figure out what our next step is here. Because I think this might actually be the last episode. Um, I'm not sure. We only have two Archons left to deal with. It's Blade and Mark and Tunon, my former boss. Or my current boss. I, I'm actually not entirely sure how our relationship is right now. But either way, I think something's going to be changing in our employment status. In our in our working relationship. I'm an Archon now. He's an Archon. I'm, am I still a Fatebinder? I, I honestly have no idea. <clears throat> so one of the one of the things that we're gonna be doing hopefully is upgrading more equipment. Let's talk magic? No, I don't wanna talk magic. I wanna to talk to this guy. We got Hierarch's robes. Hey, that sounds pretty awesome. That sounds pretty, pretty awesome. Um I wanna research something else now. Not that I think I'm going to have the time to do it, necessarily. But yes, research that, please. Uh, okay, we've been to those two. Let's go to the Ocean Spire. That'll just give us potions that I probably won't use. <laughs> I, I'm very miserly when it comes to potions. I really, really hate using all my potions. Um, it's something that I'm going to have to learn to deal with. Especially it. when I play on higher difficulties, I'm always like, I gotta use potions. <laughs> what have you made for me? Whoa, lots of stuff. You've been really busy. You've been really, really busy. None of those are... Oh, wait, this is a healing potion. That's a healing potion. Okay. Okay, you pass. You pass. I like that. Did I actually take them? Okay, nothing. Yes, okay. Good. Good, 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 good. Let's go to the Sunset Spire. This will be our last one. <clears throat> and then we're gonna go see Bled and Mark. See if he, uh, see if he bends the knee. And swears fealty to me. Swears fealty to a new overlord. But like, hey, I'm the new kid on the block, on the spire. What do you think? Have you completed forging anything for me? Yes, some metal. Uh, I want you to forge something for me. Forge something cool. Get me a. Oh, Deathbringer. That sounds pretty sweet. Scythe of Years. Holy crap, that's pretty nice, actually. Pretty, pretty nice. Pretty debilitating, it looks like. I don't have enough materials for this. What am I missing? Hides. Oh, man. Is there some way I can get those faster? <laughs> or, like, can I buy them or something? And I've never known where to get this Hound's Hide mantle. That's very annoying. Very, very annoying. It's heavy. Immunity to hobble, that's pretty sweet. Snowfang. Pretty cool stuff. There's some pretty cool things in here. Um, none of which I feel the need to, to actually use. <laughs> oh well. I guess we're good with what we've got. Let's just go see Blade and Mark in Ashfield. Oh man, go all the way from there? That's crazy. So I don't know what the Legion's going to do. We killed Graven Ash. They no longer have that protection. It really seemed like the entire Legion just died. Like all the wounds that Graven Ash was absorbing from them just caught up with them somehow and they all just keeled over. Right. Um, not complaining. Legion sucked. So I'm, I'm happy to see them gone. The chorus is still there. They're like, oh, they killed Voices of Narad. Well, I guess I'll get dinner going. <laughs> they didn't seem to care all that much. Which is good. And now this guy. Tell me one more time. How's your sex life? Think you've earned me as your blade? <laughs> I can see that you've defeated the Archons of War and Secrets. No easy feat. But are you ready to stand against the Adjudicator, the Overlord? Well, to be honest, it was easier than you might think. Um... No, I am pushing to pick a fight with Kairos. I think we're going to challenge Kairos. Let's do that. Take the dagger. What dagger? Is he offering me a dagger? Oh. 
offering me one of his signature blades. Oh, that... You know what we need to do next. What's going on with this? Hey, they bite me. Dissolves into the palm of my hand. It's in my hand? What the hell? I'm like Scorpion now? Get over here! You'll next see me with the Adjudicator. Be ready to wield your blade. Okay, I mean, I assume he's gonna bend the knee to me now. Um, I've gained the loyalty of Blade and Mark. Oh, really? Like, it's official now? Blade and Mark does like me a lot. I don't know why. Uh, final judgment? Okay, yeah, we're gonna get there. Uh, truth and reconciliation. I, I think we're gonna leave this quest undone. That'll be the one quest that we don't finish. <laughs> um, check on Barrick. Okay. Well, I mean, I don't know. I guess Blood and Mark is settled. Um, now it's to the Bastard City. This is it. I mean, I don't think we fight Kairos in this game, and I don't think there's a sequel coming. <laughs> or at least not anytime soon. Um, so let's let's just see what Tunon's uh, willing to do. Is he going to be my Archon of Justice from now on? To be honest, I don't really want him. I want to. Uh, I want a lawless anarchist paradise. Not that I think that this world is necessarily ready for it. I think uh, you know, anarchism is something that takes many, many generations to prepare for. That kind of that kind of society, but. Oh yeah, everyone else is dismissed. I'm a very important person. I'm a VIP. This decree is not subject to deliberation. The officers... Oh, that, that went a little too quickly. Or I started reading it too late, rather. Fatebinder, thank you for answering my summons. I mean, you are this my boss. This could very well be the defining hour of the conquest. I came here only to kill you. <laughs> let's, let's just skip all the pleasantries. No, I'm gonna bow to him. Let's... I first want to make it clear why we've assembled today. Let's be polite. After the collapse of Vendrian's well and the start of the Civil War, it became clear to me that there must have been some great fault on the part of the Archons. We come together to root out the source of our troubles and determine which of the Archons has sown more chaos during the war. I could point to the culprit and spare us a discussion. This is the scum who brought down the voices. That's true, I did. I hope it isn't your intention to arm yourself before the Court of Peaceful Legal Representatives, Commander, unless you to offer amusement as Bledmark flays you for our delight. Good one, Callio. I think she's the one who's like super loyal to me, right? She's the one who came to my spire and be like, Hey, uh, you know, if you kill Tunon, remember me. Call me. Hit me up. <laughs> Much has happened since I dispatched you on that mission. I agree. Much has happened. Raven Ash and the voices of Narat, the appointed generals of this war, are both dead. You were instructed with bringing justice to the unlawful, but you have clearly taken the law into your own hands. Huh. I acted on the Overlord's admonition that only one Archon could rule the tears. I don't know which one of these he'll accept. I mean, the voice is the madman. He didn't deserve a trial. That's not necessarily true. I think Tunan's going to say everyone deserves a trial. Perhaps. If he's, like, you know, consistent. I acted on the Overlord's admonition that only one Archon would rule the tears. Do not attempt to lay responsibility for your treason at the Overlord's feet. One does not establish rule through turning coat and committing murder. No one epitomized enlightened rule like the voice of Narat. 
<laughs> what? No, come on. That's really funny. Not that I disparage the Archon of Justice. <laughs> and you would be that self-appointed ruler. <laughs> yeah. This court wonders what blood sacrifices your ambition will demand of you next. This court wonders or you wonder? The court has a serious problem to address. Your conduct throughout this campaign has come into question, and you will answer for your actions. Oh, will I? Oh, will I? You have made quite a name for yourself, Fatebinder. Stories of your deeds have spread through the tears, and all of them have reached this court. Some actions have consequences. We will see what your actions have wrought. Only good things. The chaos you've sown everywhere is unacceptable. You cast yourself so far outside the established order, I cannot begin to catalog your misdeeds. For this, you have been deemed guilty and must be executed. <laughs> Might I allowed to have a trial? Is that not proper procedure? The outcome is a foregone conclusion, Fatebinder. Your actions cannot be allowed to stand. But if you wish to make a mockery of this court, I will add it to your list of offenses. I want to defend my actions, Very Mofo. well. If you insist we proceed, then we shall. You are on trial for transgressing on the Overlord's authority, breaking the laws of the Empire, bringing mayhem to an otherwise orderly conquest, and Was meddling it in concerns that fell beyond your station. Our directive to bring Kairos's peace to the tears has suffered, and you will answer for the part you played. I don't think it was orderly. I think all along it was Archons bickering and competing. <laughs> Scarlet Chorus trying to undermine constantly. If you don't mind, Adjudicator, we are on familiar terms with the Fatebinder here. Should any inconsistencies require our input, we will add our voices as testimony. The court has inquiries into your conduct. I bet I you do. I first call your travel companions to speak on your behalf as witnesses to your character or accomplices to your crimes. Well, they have high loyalty, so they should speak Who favorably. Who will speak on behalf of the Fatebinder? Siren, Archon of Song, give us your full report. Of course, Your Honor. Your respect for a fellow Archon is duly noted. I thank you for asking me to add my input in this very delicate matter. I will endeavor to speak honestly and stick to the heart of the matter. This reminds me of a lot of the emails I used to get when I worked in Japan. <laughs> it's like, I thank you for your question. I thank you for your email. Uh, very, After a very polite. After a of being degraded and humiliated for the aggressive. amusement of others, <laughs> the Fatebinder took an injured young woman and treated her as an equal. His behavior is beyond reproach. There is no equal in my eyes. Will anyone else speak on the Fatebinder's behalf? Scarlet Fury, you who sacrificed your old life for this one, step forward. Me? As if the likes of me has any business speaking in a grand hall before the Archon. Why, I've murdered enough folk to stack their bodies up to the podium ten times over. Your Honor. No need to humble brag. The Fatebinder and I get along like a couple of cats. We scratch here and there, but there's respect to be had. Sometimes I think we agree on too much, but eh, can't fight everyone. I suppose I've had worse bosses, and I suppose I've had better friends. But this one's something special. I've killed for him, and I'll do it again. Very soon, perhaps. Will anyone else speak on the Fatebinder's behalf? Let the aged chronicler step forward. It's a bit of a side swipe, isn't it? <laughs> if it may please the court, I will speak true. I have had the honor and privilege of shadowing the Archon. A dream come true for someone so eager to witness history in the unfolding. I can say with conviction, I am following greatness. I don't know if that really helps my case, to be honest. <laughs> if anything, wouldn't that make Tunon really nervous? He's like, oh god, ambition. Uh. <laughs> and if required, I could produce my travelogue to back my claims. I've noted the good with the bad, and I think you'll find the Archon has been a force of order and balance. 
exactly what you would want from a fate binder. Will anyone else speak on the fate binder's behalf? Well, there is no one else. Why would you even ask that? Evidently not. The time has come for the fate binder to offer his testimony. Objection! God, I need some, like... I need an attorney. Don't I have a right to an attorney? Phoenix right? Don't I have a Phoenix right to an attorney? You were asked with bringing order to the conquest of the tears, and yet you ignored your directive from the Archons. Do you hold the conquest itself in contempt, or did none of the ruling factions convince you of their worth? Supporting Archons who already proved themselves lacking would have been a waste of progress. I recognized a better way to unify the tears. You make a better argument than I would have credited. The Archons performed beneath their capacity, then I can understand why you sought a different route. What do you mean, if? I think everyone knows that they did, didn't they? Wasn't there an edict specifically because they were performing under their, under their uh, expectations? Subpar. They were all subpar. Mediocre, if you like. I dispatched you to the Vellum Citadel to deliver Kairos' Edict of Fire to the School of Ink and Quill, a punishment for their archival of forbidden lore and failure to recognize the right of authority to, of the Overlord. Yet you hesitated longer than necessary in its issuance, warning the sages and allowing them opportunity to perform a ritual that preserved much of their heretical knowledge. I think, uh... Archive? Not archival? Come on, guys. Obsidian. The Fatebinder's actions spared more lives than books, Archon. There was a little there was little that could be done in the few hours before the edict came to pass, aside from fleeing with a handful of pages and the sandals on one's feet. The Overlord intended neither page nor flesh to be spared, Sage. I don't know how you would know that. I mean, bang off, buddy. Thank you for speaking on my behalf, but like, you weren't there. <laughs> Enough. There shall be order as the Fatebinder answers this charge. Yeah, it's my judgment. <laughs> That's funny. Um... The Archon of Secrets claimed to have spies among the sages. He personally requested time for them to escape. As I had no strict deadline for delivering the edict, I honored his request. Yes, blame the bronze-headed bastard. Narath's such a believable scapegoat. You basically have to throw it to the wolves. <laughs> I mean, that's not really how I meant it. I mean, I, you know, I was being sincere there. Thanks, Shirin, for undermining my fucking testimony. You're not a good lawyer. <laughs> the... The request of an Archon could certainly buy a few hours reprieve from an edict if the circumstances warranted it. You showed appropriate judgment in this situation, though I harbor suspicions of the Archon's motives for the entreaty. Well, yeah, that's why I killed him ultimately, isn't it? Come on, Tunon. Use that use that stony face of yours. You resolved Kairos' Edict of Storms with legal contrivance. What's more, you spared Stalwart's ruling bloodline, circumventing the edict's very purpose. Did you think the Overlord's Fury was a riddle for you to unravel? Uh, basically, yes. <laughs> Ooh, that's a really sharp one. If the Overlord's will can be overcome by a legal loophole, don't you see the implication? Kairos is fallible. Oh, ho. Your Honor, I move that this statement be stricken from the record on grounds of falsehood. <laughs> oh, that's funny. That's really funny. Oh, yeah, okay, we gain some wrath. You presume to understand the Overlord's will? You believe that armed with a modicum of research and idle chatter, you outwitted the Overlord? I find your claims as repugnant as they are naive. You entered the Old Walls, a clear violation of Kairos' law. How do you answer for this perversion of justice? Do you think yourself above the law? Yeah, that's this is really going to piss him off if I say this one. <laughs> my trespass, my only trespass came in pursuit of trespassers that I might punish their transgressions. <coughs> The circumstances you describe have no precedent, but I trust your reasoning. 
Agents of my court are not immune to the law, but your position was an impossible one. At the city of Halfgate, you killed the garrisoned chorusmen who lawfully claimed it. A dozen of Kairos' servants bloodied the streets in your wake. I mean, technically, yeah, isn't this consistent with the laws of the chorus? <laughs> I, I think I did them a favor there with uh, attacking her crew, but... They attacked me and hence violated Kairos' peace. I defended myself appropriately. I suspected as much. Then why'd you ask the question, honestly? A pity you could not do so without eradicating Kairos' presence in the town. I have one final question, Fate got my presence in the town now. You were brought to this campaign to adjudicate the disagreements between the two armies. After your arrival, matters quickly escalated into a civil war. Did you knowingly join the conquest of the tears to sow discord in your wake? Or were you merely a victim of circumstance? Hmm. Yeppers. <laughs> Sorry. Yesh. Um. <laughs> Adjudicator. Flattered. That's really funny. <laughs> If I have nothing but contempt for this court, yeah, I would definitely go with that one. Um, at some point, I'm gonna have to do like a a rebel playthrough, joining the uh, joining the Vendrians Well people, and yeah, definitely like be flippant toward Kairos and uh, Tunan. <laughs> but for now, let's see. Um, I recognized the Archon's corruption from the start. It was only a matter of time before they turned on each other, and I was prepared for that eventuality. If you anticipated a failure on this scale, you should have informed me, or else work to avoid it rather than pit combatants against each other. Bullshit. Did you not assign me to this because you suspected this same? Come on, you gave me a mission that implies you already knew this was the case. Truly the wisdom of the court knows no bounds, Your Honor. I am finished with my <laughs> line of questions. Suck up. Have you any closing remarks for the court? Uh, let's just see. <laughs> I just wanted to say I don't reckon... Oh, that's really funny. That's very funny. I love that. <laughs> I don't recognize this court's authority to judge me. Thank you. <laughs> I've got nothing but contempt for this court. <laughs> uh, Kairos' peace is a lie. The overlords hold dominion because we are ignorant to the alternatives. The better overlord stands before you, ready to define justice as he sees fit. Blasphemy. To Bitch, foul yeah. the air of this court with such language is an abomination. Too bad. Kneel or die, bitch. After weighing the charges, this court finds you guilty of all charges. It is this court's opinion that you are a seditious mastermind, a scheming derelict, and a traitor bent on sowing the destruction of the Northern Empire. The sentence is death. We shall see about that, Adjudicator. Hubris in the face of annihilation. My court and the world at large are better rid of you, wretched thing. Blood and Mark, execute him. Execute him. Oh yes, indeed. We'll see how that turns out. Blood and Mark is very, very nice to me. <laughs> this is very cool. Shadows pool and merge briskly together. Long wisps like blades billow, twist, and snap as Blood and Mark emerges from the coalescing darkness. Against the expectations of the room, his deadly focus falls not on you, but to tune on. Forgive me, Adjudicator, but this dagger now cuts for another Archon. That's right. I'm going to slice you from throat to thigh and bleed your insides out, but I'll make it quick. Days end here! Thanks for the song there. I don't know if that was necessary, but <laughs> okay. Archon of Justice floats with utter equipoise, an iron grace, stolid and unmoving in the face of Bledmark's attack. A myriad of shadow doubles converge on the Archon, darting, slicing, and skewering with dripping black blades, as deadly as they are immaterial. But the Adjudicator makes no move to dodge. Instead, he merely snatches one by the throat and lifts it high before him. 
The shadow immediately begins to seep and dissolve into nothingness, slipping with a hiss through black-gloved fingers. But before it can escape, the adjudicator slams the half of his gavel against the ground, rocking the corp with a staggering shock wave of raw power. A blindingly white light flares from the head of the gavel, and the wisping, thrashing shadow in Tudon's grip snaps harshly into the very solid form of Bled and Mark, sneering with pain as every last shadow in the room burns hotly away. A cur, believing he has severed his leash, would bite at his own master's hand. I see I must bring you to heal, yet again. I have to say, that would be much more epic if they actually animated it with these two. <laughs> um, but, I meh. Moved the binding of shadows. You have no... Hold on me! Adjudicator! Who taught you? What? Did you teach him? Really? He chokes and writhes against Tunan's grip, but every dagger he draws dissipates in the harsh glare of light. His skin burns, and his clothes smoke, and finally a jagged cry escapes his throat. Did you think the Overlord favored you because she spared you once? Did you believe that she would one day allow you to defeat me? That she would entrust you to me with no sound means for discipline? <sighs> Sorry, kid. <laughs> Can't help you after all. Don't worry. I won't die. Oh, are you sure? Because you have disintegrating whole chunks of your body, I and mean, that's not a description that you want to uh, to <laughs> to have describe you. <laughs> and reflect upon the consequence of your choices, Archon of Shadows. Suffer in a state of endless illumination until I deem you have corrected your misbehavior. Could I not have like run up the steps by now and intervened here? <laughs> Why am I still watching from below? Be gone, Archon of Shadows. You bring disgrace to your very station. No. He was my only Archon friend. Aside from to cheating, I guess. Such impertinence in my very court. All will be punished in due time. You, Fatebinder, will be the first. Yeah, I assume that even if Tudon survived this, he would be, like, super changed. He would be... Pretty crazy with what happened here. Um, let's get you back. And, and let's start buffing the crap out of people. This, uh, I don't know. I don't know how this is gonna go. I, I, is too not easy? Earth itself can go to hell. As you command. Let's get that going. Can he bleed? Uh, did he bleed? Oh, yes, he is bleeding. Oh, nice. Okay. Let's sunder him, too. Let's do all the moves. He's not doing much damage to me, though. Holy crap. He's pathetic. <laughs> Whoa, that's kind of uh Okay, that hurt. <laughs> that one definitely hurt. Let's... Healing going. There we go. Let's get some healing wisps. Can you back off? Ah, pity you won't enjoy this. Uh, let's. Okay, two on. You're going down. One. Let's finish him off with blood on stone. Oh, did that, did that screw up? It did not. And it was a nice finisher. Oh, ho, ho. You, you have learned much in your few years, Archon. Striking down our kind is more than the swinging of a blade or pounding of a mallet. I mean, that seems to be all it took to take down Bled and Mark, but... <laughs> there are Kairos Whatever. laws, and the laws that govern our natural order. I fear they often... Diverge. I have broken the laws of nature for too long. Life should end in its course. And this is my time at last. Indeed. Kairos is coming. 
An army swifter and more dangerous than disfavored and scarlet chorus combined makes for the tears, propelled by the Overlord's will. Your efforts here are wasted. You cannot halt this advance. Hmm. Can't I? An edict issued upon the Northern Empire should do the trick. Perhaps I underestimated you. You... You wield the talents of the Overlord. Better that you use them to end your life, because Kairos will dismantle everything you attempt to build. Good luck. I don't need luck, man. That's chorus justice for you. No matter how tall you may stand, someone below is eager to watch you fall. If you had told me this morning we're going to slay the oldest living Archon, I'd have thought you mad. I bet he never thought he'd be done in by one of his own fate binders. His downfall will make for a most amusing chapter of the Chronicle. Yes, and please write it as a comedy. This is incredible, fate binder. We've just destroyed Kairos' personal judge and executioner. If there was any doubt of your power, it's gone now. Is Blood and Mark okay, though? <laughs> that's, that's my real concern. Oh, hello. He just turned to stone and shattered. And we have his face mask. And with that, we can render judgment and be like, Hey, I'm Tunon. Look at me. Look at me, guys. I'm Tunon. <laughs> I'm now the head of the Tunon cult. Uh, Lindmark is... Is Lindmark dead? Really? Shit. So now there really are only two Archons left on the tiers. And that's me and Shireen, and she's loyal to me, so that's that's all good. Um, wait, I'm guessing I'm guessing I have to go back to the Vendrian's well. Is that the case? I've equipped a powerful artifact. Thank you for that. Uh, Armies of the North. Okay, yes. Check on Barrack at the Mountain Spire. Yes, we can do that too. As long as the game doesn't force us to end it as soon as we get here. Encounter the Bastard Tier. Who's going to encounter me? I'm like a new overlord. Oh, long grayish tube of flesh, a grave worm. These pallid creatures do much to enrich the soil of the tears, but their meat can also make a bland, chewy meal if need dictates. Let's hunt it. Grave worm undulates slowly in the light of Tarada's grave, its rubbery gray skin speckled with a bit of soil. I don't have a very strong magic, so let's collect the worm. Wham bam, we got some some meat. Raw meat. We're gonna end the encounter. Let's go to Vandrian's well. And yeah, this is pretty much it. I mean I'm guessing we're not actually gonna fight any of Kairos' forces. Um I really would like to see a sequel to this game, but I don't think it's in the cards. Hey, Beric, how do you feel about pitching one out for the first time Fate in a long time? <clears throat> Archon? Freedom feels good, doesn't it? But frightening, too. All the possibilities. I remember that well. I do not know if having the freedom to choose my own clothes compares to being plucked from the Overlord's dungeons and offered a new life in Tunon's service. But I take your point. The Great General is dead. The disfavored, broken. Everything I have valued in my life, lost. And in return, what has the world gained? A stone shield who can choose to lay down his armor? Uh, yeah, pretty much. When you put it that way, I guess it sounds less impressive, but, uh, yeah, enjoy it. And you, <laughs> with your half-truths and shadow dealings, do I accept them as tools of the court? Merely a result of your training? Or do they mark an unredeemable lack of character? <laughs> lack of character? Probably a bit of both. Of course it is. There exists no room for simplicity among the <laughs> fate binders. That's right. You would not make a good fate binder. You would make a terrible, terrible fate binder, Patrick Starr. There remains nothing further to say. Let us do anything else. So you're not so you're not so happy that you're out of your died. armor, right? What can I do for you? It's kind of unfortunate. 
never free. Well, he is now, whether he likes it or not. And he's going to learn to appreciate it. I think when he gets to old age, he's going to he's going to feel something happy, somewhat happy about it. Let's uh, let's issue an edict. Affirm my loyalty to Kairos? No. <laughs> After all we've been through? Come on. Let's see. This probably amounts to a declaration of war against the Overlord. Ready? So this is it. We've come a long way since Edring Ruins. I never... Before this, I was nothing important. One Scarlet Chorus killer among thousands. Well, we're really doing something here. Thanks for letting me tag along. Following your progress has been, well, one of the great pleasures of my career. I've shown yourself, you've, you've shown yourself to be something greater than I ever expected. And I had rather self-indulged fantasies about being primary authority of the world's most fascinating figure. I am eager to see wherever this takes us, my friend. It's incredible what you've done to get here. I think you can take it another step further. And I want to be at your side when it happens. You were the first one who didn't twist me to suit your ends. And I'll never forget that. So let's finish what we started. Hmm. This will be an opening strike. Perhaps the tears will conquer the Northern Empire. <laughs> if I don't show my if I don't show Kairos my ability to cast the edict. It's more than a one-time thing. The attacks will never stop. Hmm, that would make a that would be a repose for the ages. If it were up to me, we'd debate the matter until Kairos' forces were upon us. You could better hurry. Okay, so Northern Empire? What's oh, this is all Northern Empire? So wait, does Kairos not have control of all of this up here? I thought he had like everything except the tears. But, okay, this is like Graven Ash's homeland, right? So, what do we want to do? We want to... Edict of Nightfall? Oh, this is going to be the end of the episode. But, anyway, probably just about done. So, or Malediction. What is this? Let's do the Malediction. We're going to issue a unique edict, one that I wasn't, you know, taught as a fate binder somehow. Let's get this tuning fork on. Does Kairos have one of these? Like, I figured this, is this also the source of Kairos' power? That he has a spire somewhere else in Taratus? And he just speaks to the tuning forks and be like, hey, no more mutants. Or does whatever, you know? Boom. It's a beautiful thing. The tears have been conquered. Unified at last under a single banner. My banner. Your edict brings devastation and ruin to the Northern Empire. Some believe the edict to be Kairos's work. Others hope or fear that this edict comes from a new voice. Kairos's forces withdraw from their march upon the Tears, as they are sent into disarray by your edict. With none left in the Tears to challenge your claim, you fortify your grasp on the war-torn realm. The Overlord's conquest of the known world has come to a halt and the whisper of a challenger to Kairos' power slowly spreads throughout the land. By casting the Edict of Malediction on the northern capital, you can sign the Overlord City to an invisible plague of misfortune and calamity. I feel kind of bad about that, I'm not going to lie. I'd rather have solved this without a, an Edict, but I guess I kind of needed to do it. The foundations of once proud buildings fracture under some unseen pressure and whole districts empty as the city's infrastructure crumbles. Laborers brought in to repair the damage find their work undone hours or even minutes later. Citizens leave the city a ghost town, 
and whisper among themselves how Kairos could how Kairos could allow such a curse to infect their homeland. Kairos be damned. I did it. I'm sorry I did it. I didn't really want to do an edict, but I guess it had to be done. I don't know. You can't challenge Kairos without showing him your power, unfortunately. And the way that magic works in this game, your power increases when people fear you or, or love you. It's like a, a weird meta... Uh, what's his name? Meta Machiavellian <laughs> magic system. It's very cool. As chaos ensued in the Northern Kingdom, the armored armies uh, marching on the tiers received an unprecedented order. The armies were to fall back to the capital and ensure the safety of its people from the edict. For the first time in Kairos' great conquest, the armies retreated. Soon, questions would be asked in a hushed breath across the lands about what new and terrible power had emerged that could force the hand of the Overlord. You fulfilled Kairos' decree, and all the tears is now ruled by a single Archon. Your former rivals have either submitted to you or perished, bringing the civil war to a close. Neither of the Archons charged with conquering the Tears impressed you enough to follow their lead. You ultimately defied your orders, seeing a better way to gain control, eliminating every Archon who dared stand in your way, and carved your own seat of power in the Tears, keeping yourself independent from the Northern Empire. In their prime, the Disfavored never imagined themselves beaten, and yet they were beaten consistently throughout the fucking conquest, those fucking idiots. Disfavored suck, they're a bunch of losers. They didn't even have the imagination to see that. That's crazy. <laughs> Especially when their opponents appeared to so disorganized. The last remnants of the Legion disperse. Their general destroyed. Their honor broken beyond mending. The scorn that follows their humbled ranks haunts them even in the depths of obscurity. And that's where they'll remain, because they suck. The Scarlet Chorus may have been mighty in numbers, but that didn't stop you from thoroughly scattering them. Cutting off the Serpent's head and sending each of the gangs hellling back to the chaos they sowed. How the remnants of the Horde occupy themselves without a war to fight becomes a topic for nightmares. Yeah, they'll probably just be bandits. They'll be like the Bronze Brotherhood at best. You know? They suck too. Their circuses need a lot of work. Maybe they'll improve. They'll take this time. They'll sit down and be like, you know what? Maybe our circuses could be better. Maybe we could entertain people. And not just, like, flay them alive in front of people, you know? Maybe we could be better people. Sad clown face. Word of your success spreads beyond the tears as well. Even the most distant corners of the Empire whisper of the Fatebinder who rose to become an Archon, and an Archon whose intervention shattered the conquest, making way for a new future in the devastated nation. I will be the Archon of Peace, the Archon of Anti-War. I don't know if peace is going to be appropriate. That edict did a lot of damage. But <laughs> without the Kairos, without the authority of Kairos' Archons to enforce the Overlord's vision on the world, the fall of the conquest becomes a great revolution. Warring factions struggle for dominance, and infighting is a fact of daily life. Every group insists the situation is an opportunity for the Tears to rebuild as they see fit. With the Edict of Stone dispelled, the earth settles around the Stone Sea, ushering a new age of verdant growth and prosperity. The country may never resemble the glorious realm of Azur, but with new life, many new things become possible. The memory of Cairn as a great force of destruction remains as a monument of inner rock. Most agree that the world is better off without the Archon of Stone, as the people of Azur begin to slowly reclaim the land that was once torn asunder by his power. Got like a nice measly little crop going on here. That's, It's a start. We'll take it. But the Edict of Stone dispelled, you ensure that the humans will once again populate the former realm of Azur. The Stonestalker tribe is gradually pushed out of their new territory, and those who don't resist are enslaved, put to work rebuilding new human settlements. Okay, that's, that's not good. Hey, I'm very anti-slavery. I don't want slavery going on in my realm. What the hell? The death of... The death of the Radix? Was he the Radix? Was Radix his title all along? I thought it was his name. The death of the Radix is a huge blow to the disfavored. Without the support of the Mage Guild, the Legion finds itself outclassed for the first time and suffers on the battlefield. For the first time, my ass. They were outclassed every step of the way. Don't be a joke. Come on. 
By claiming Sentinel Stand for yourself, your renown spreads across the region and everyone comes to know you as the liberator of the country's most iconic fortress. That you claimed it for pride instead of any tactical advantage is a point of contention, which your harshest detractors never fail to cite in their long list of grievances. What are you talking about? Pride? I freed it. I just, like, I just got rid of the arc, the, uh, the edict, that's all. And I, like, spared the life of a baby. What the hell? To save her child, Amelia abdicated the, her claim to the throne of Snowward. Lacking allies or a mission beyond survival, she bundles her baby close and sets out to find a safer, less warlike frontier in modest anonymity. If the need arises, she is ready to protect the precious burden with her life. Though it takes time to recover from the devastation of the Edict of Storms, the Bladegrave begins its slow march toward healing. The realm of Stalwart may never resemble its former glory, but the land is not so blasted that something new and better can't be built atop the bones of the past. The Regent's bloodline has ended. With it, new traditions and legacies spring to life. That's exactly how it should be. Following Bledenmark's direction, you fought your way through the Skellic Chorus in control of the Vellum Citadel, and found your way to the Silent Archive. By removing it from the building, you were able to end the Edict of Fire, but also require an artifact of immense power. By claiming the Vellum Citadel for yourself, you treated the Repository of Knowledge no better than the Sages of Old, hoarding it from the deserving scholars and public who would benefit from history's most poignant lessons. You resolved to plumb the depths of the library's rarest collections, setting your every intention on secrets not meant for prying eyes. Those are the best kinds of secrets, though, let's be honest. I'm gonna be like, archive leaks. I'll be the uh, the Julian Assange of the tears. I'm gonna leak what all these, arc these uh, sages have been writing. <laughs> though the sages persist in wandering the tears and gathering research, the loss of the Vellum Citadel proves too crippling a defeat. The scribes and mages seek opportunity away from their old home, a new refuge where they can start again, this time making sure their knowledge doesn't fall into the wrong hands. Can I recommend this little humble abode inside the old walls called the Bastard's Wound? That'd make a nice little citadel, wouldn't it? Without any formal leadership in Lethian's Crossing, the people of Haven elected to govern themselves for the first time in ages. Hey, that's the way it should be. However, rivalries among merchants began to spark violence without anyone to enforce order. As the town began to slip into further lawlessness, Harshian Bronze seized the opportunity to rally those that remained loyal to him and took control of the settlement by driving out those that disapproved of his authority. His brash and austere leadership ushered in a new age of modest prosperity for Lethian's Crossing, but at the cost of what some would call a new occupation of the settlement. Fuck. I wasn't able to prevent that, eh? By returning the Magebane Helm to Lethian's Crossing, you ensured the Bane would not be able to get into the city. For the time being, the threat of a Bane incursion is dispelled. The settlers are grateful to know about their lives unburdened by this peril. To go about their lives unburdened by this peril, though knowing how close they came to annihilation haunts them. They hope that the security you provide endures. You allowed the Forgebound Master to live, as her life held no bearing on your greater schemes. With Ash dead and the disfavored found floundering, the Forge bound also fail, having lost their main source of work. Are you serious? Come on, wouldn't Harshion Bronze have a lot of uh, need for iron? Eventually their numbers dwindle to a handful of skilled Forge workers who only take commissions from the very wealthy. That sucks. You attempt to direct the Bastard's Wound community via occasional visits and regular massives, missives, but the settlement's remoteness and the necessities of your prominent position doom your efforts to failure. Without your guidance, the wound slowly turns on itself. Patrols go unled and food without water. Patrols go unled and food without water, and tensions arise. Some leave, some die, and some struggle on, but no one leads a contented life. I mean, I think that settlement was doomed from the beginning, so I don't really care. By enacting an edict on Vendrian's well, you announced your power to the world and showed Kairos' forces what you were capable of. When you defeated their leader and scattered the army before you, it sent a message to Kairos. A new Archon is born. While the edict dissipated, its effect will always be felt as the first true threat to Kairos' rule. The death of Graven Ash means the end of the disfavored. Without the comfort and support of the great general, the remains of the legion sinks into hopelessness. 
the Archon's seat is left vacant, and whether or not it can be occupied again is a heated topic. Far from the, his place of final rest, the Northern Empire mourns its fallen son. Killing the voices of Narat spreads the joy of bloody vengeance across the continent. Celebrated as the death of history's greatest parasite, the occasion is marked by all who suffered under the oppression of the Scarlet Chorus. Even in victory, one thought nags you. Though you witnessed his death, you can't help but wonder if the voices of Narat isn't done with you. With the death of Tunan the Adjudicator, the bastard city threatens to slide back into its lawless ways. Keeping peace and imposing a new definition of order commands all your focus. You learn to delegate the responsibilities to a new court of Fatebinders, who lighten the burden and make the Archon's absence a manageable setback. Yeah, he wasn't that important. The fealty of a killer like Bled Mark leaves you consistently glancing over your shoulder. You gain a measure of comfort by retaining his skills as a headsman, keeping him busy with assignments that take him far from your seat of power. As the spans pass, you come to rely on his knack for rooting out agents of your enemies and sleep easier under his watchful protection. Yeah, we're best buds. I'm glad he's not dead. I'm glad he's still alive. You may have released Beric from his twisted shell of bronze and armor. Was it bronze? I thought it was iron. I thought he was wearing all iron. That's so weird. But you will never free him from his displacement. Nor does he make any attempts to liberate himself from you. At times you wonder if it was truly the armor that kept him filthy at all, or if it was merely the excuse he clung to for his regression. Angry and morose, Beric brutally vents his frustrations upon the troops in his charge, quickly becoming the most feared and loathed of your drill masters. Beric sometimes disappears for weeks without warning, masturbating furiously in the bushes of the forest, <laughs> always returning more morose and muck-covered than he left. Oh god. The spy you sent to track him on one of these excursions reports that he wanders the path of the conquest, laying to proper rest his fallen disfavored comrades. It seems an impossibly large task for the lifetime of a lone man, even one who so desperately seeks atonement. Poor Beric. Though freed of his twisted shell of bronze and iron, Beric seems less, a little less morose. He, see, he moves forward from the Edict of Storms only haltingly, attention half turned ahead toward an uncertain future, and half behind at the choices that brought him here. The Northerner remains dedicated to the, low, and to the oaths he had sworn to you, drilling your forces and commanding them on the field. If he isn't exactly loved by your troops, he at least holds their respect. And that's really all I ask of him. In the rare times of calm, he takes leaves of absence from your service, scouring the blade grave for the fallen sons and daughters of the Northern Empire, and laying them to proper rest. Though the somber task seems one beyond the meager lifespan allotted a soldier, Beric returns from each of these excursions, standing just a bit more upright. You're doing the right thing, dude. In the absence of the voices of Narat and the need to avenge her fallen scissors, Verse discovers something akin to a contentment. For the time, you find her high atop your spire, face turned toward the horizon with eyes closed against the wind that ruffles the feathers in her hair. It doesn't last. First disappears from your service without a farewell. When she returns months later, she is trailed by a desperate gang of young women recruited from every corner of the tiers. Farmers, merchants, and former nobles, hungry for greatness. All pledged to study the bloody lessons First has to impart. Her new callous sisterhood grows slowly compared to the chorus, but each member takes a violence, makes a violence a mesmerizing dance. Soon Verse and her cadre become the most feared of your enforcers, achieving a notoriety almost akin to that of Bled and Marks. I think she's on the verge of becoming an Archon myself. Lantry keeps a close watch over you, scribbling his accounts of your deeds and accomplishments. In his tireless quest to fill the chronicle with history and knowledge, he follows you even into his twilight years, and together you learn much about the world. You pretend not to notice Lantry's waning strength, though you find yourself pausing mid-sentence to let his writing catch up. He recognizes your generous ruse and appreciates it in silence. Ebb remains in my company, where she seeks out promising recruits among their, amongst my supporters. After recognizing some obvious talent, she takes on a team of apprentices in a new school of what would be Tidecasters. 
Though she often jokes that the school is bound to fail with her at the helm, her students think otherwise, as do many dozens of hopefuls who come begging for her tutelage. Kills in Shadow shows little interest in cleaning up the tears after my victory. Instead, she takes it upon herself to hunt down every disfavored soldier in the country. Oh my god, you're making Barrack work longer. Come on. You hear frequent word of maulings and disappearances among Kairos' ranks, perpetuated by a beast of legis legendary ferocity. Though you could no doubt track down your wayward companion, you let her continue the bloody work out of equal parts respect and fear. Without the threat of the Overlord's control, Shireen struggles with how to manage her freedom. Inspiration finally strikes her, and she travels the tears visiting the small villages ravaged by Kairos' occupation. She sings to the frightened and hurt villagers, buoying their spirits and allaying their fears. Guilt for her hand in the horrors wrought upon the world by the Scarlet Chorus spur her on, and her wonders become more and more spectacular. The followers of the Songbird grow in number, taking the message of peace and harmony throughout Teratus. That's actually really great. I'm happy about that. By abandoning the, your decorated career in Kairos' military, you gave the tears room to define the path ahead. The future will not be mapped by foreign ideals or the will of a distant autocrat. It is only a matter of time before the Overlord launches a retaliation. And we will be ready for it, friends and comrades. Without allies, the winds are especially cold atop the spire. You await Kairos' inevitable advance, brooding over the decisions that led you to this point. Though the tears are a friendless place, they are indisputably our new home. And that's the end. That's very nice. Double speed this. Uh, you know what? I think I'll wrap up my thoughts about this game in a separate video. But... In short, I really like it. I really enjoyed it. I think, uh, you know, there are some scenes that would benefit from a little bit more animation, more voice acting, but generally, generally it was really quite good. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of the magic system in this game. That's a lot of fun to play with. That's really just a, a really, really clever, clever system. Combat system in general is pretty good. I mean, it, it's... I think it's about as tight as the system in Pillars of Eternity. It's, uh, in my opinion, I, I don't think there's a, a grossly overpowered way to develop your your Fate Binder. Um, in general, I think it's pretty well developed, pretty pretty tight. Uh, at least after all the patches, you know, when the game first came out, I'm sure there were some glaring, <laughs> glaring standouts. But uh, generally, it's is. Quite a good, quite a good accomplishment, I think. I'm not sure if people are gonna appreciate the the evil uh, game that you know that actually rewards you for for pursuing an evil path um, rather than you know games like Baldur's Gate that don't really treat evil as a as a real uh, as an as an expect as an expected playthrough option. I guess I'll say like. Usually the evil path in Baldur's Gate actually prevents you from doing certain quests. Uh, prevents you from getting rewards for certain things. Um, generally, it's just not not optimal, <laughs> let's say. It's obviously not optimal. In this game, it doesn't matter. They really let you go nuts. And you can be, if not good, you can be uh, at least at least kind of neutral. You can, you can be uh, better than the rest, let's say. And that's, that's as good as it gets. The Tears is a dirty, grimy place. It's like a Game of Thrones, dark fantasy kind of kind of setting where there really aren't that many good people, so to speak. There are, you know, Graven Ash is the closest thing, perhaps, uh, or your Fate Binder if you choose to play it that way. But generally, it's pretty good. I'm a big fan of this game. I, I think the DLC was probably not worth it. I mean, it, it's... It doesn't add enough, in my opinion. It's not, uh, it's not expansive like the White March was for Pillars of Eternity. Um, it adds a really nice settlement, and some of the most amazing characters that you come across in this game are in that settlement. So you know, I guess it's packaged with the uh, this edition of the game. So if you get it, cool. It's awesome. Play it. 
but uh, yeah, I kind of wish it added a longer story or something a little more definitive about the origin of like Banes and Beast People. But as it is, I mean, it was pretty good. It was it was pretty pretty cool. I do recommend this game. I think people will enjoy it. Unless you're someone who like played Mass Effect once and never did the evil path. Maybe those people won't enjoy this so much, but in general, this has been a pleasurable experience. I really like it. I, I do hope there's a sequel, even though I kind of doubt it. I kind of doubt they're going to make another one. But the opportunity to fight Kairos and, and you know, cause a warpath through, uh, through the Northern Empire would be pretty cool. I would really enjoy it. Thank you so much for watching. If you've been following along, thank you. Thank you so much. And I hope you'll follow me uh, on whatever game I play next. It's probably going to be something like uh, Pathfinder Kingmaker or Grand Theft Auto Online. I don't know. We'll, we'll play a lot more. And I hope to catch you then. This has been Red Zed. Blind playthrough of Tierney. Very much enjoyed it. And uh, I hope I'll be seeing you next time. Thank you so much. Take care.